installation service revenue lift is driven by the improvements in our revenue cycle, um, largely. The old EMR that was in place, um, that Gifford had in place prior to moving to this new EMR, was not sufficient for the complexity of today's um, complex medical billing and coding. Um, there was a significant amount of funding left on the table that we would have otherwise been contractually obligated or entitled to receive. And that is what we are focusing on, is making sure that we are being paid appropriately for the care that we are, pro are providing at this organization. We have um, deferred much needed capital as a result. Uh, we invested in uh, the EMR, the EMR build takes a couple of years to build, and then you you deal with the aftermath post go live, um, and it's all hands on deck. And then with our financial position, we just were not in a position to invest in capital. And here at Gifford, we do respectfully request that our budget be approved as submitted for both the end net patient service revenue growth and the commercial rate increase that we have requested. Um, thank you, Ms. Holland. I, I, do you, if you don't mind, I, this isn't a hearing, but I, I did have two random questions, if that's okay with you. If it's detail, I may have to defer, but if yeah. it's philosophical, maybe we can. We can. <laughs> no, yeah. Well, one, um, thanks for joining the Gifford team at a really challenging time, a time of transition. I really respect somebody stepping into a challenge. Um, and all of Vermont healthcare right now is a challenge. So thanks for participating and trying to make things better. Um, the the day's cash on hand covenant, is that measured at any point in time or just at the end of the year? We have um, two measurement periods, one um, mid-year, March 31st, or yeah, March 31st, and one at end of the year. Calendar year? Uh, no, fiscal year. Fiscal year. Okay, great. Got it. Got it. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so the end of this month. Okay. Um, and then this, this is not that pertinent to this hearing, but the old EMR, is that Meditech? Am I remembering that right? No, the new EMR is Meditech Expanse. The old EMR was CPSI. CPSI was next gen, right? I don't know. Okay, thanks. I appreciate it. And thank you for your comment today. Any other public comment? Could I ask one? Question as well. If, if Ms. Holland doesn't mind. <laughs> yeah. Hi, Cheyenne. It's nice to see you again. Dave Merman, we worked together years ago at CVMC. So um, I, one of the things that was striking to me is the decline in Medicare revenue in the payer mix. Is there something that, that you can understand or explain why the Medicare um, portion of that payer mix seems to be declining so substantially. So I don't want to um, speculate because I wasn't, Dave, a part of the budget build. One thing I can say that we are diving into is that with the new EMR, we took the opportunity to um, classify things differently and break things out so it could be a classification issue, but I don't want to speculate um, at this point, but that is something that if if there is a request, we can dive into it for you. Great, thanks. And and welcome. Um, Ms. Murkowski, how are you? Yes, um, thank you. I'm Jill Murkowski. I am the CNO and the VP of nursing here. And I just wanted to just highlight one one element that I think is still a huge risk to Gifford as well as many of our organizations and that remains our labor expense and that lack of a bench in our healthcare workforce. Um, <clears throat> you mentioned that 53% of our expenses in our FY25 budget are labor and um, we still do not have a bench nor does anybody and so the way that we are staffing is to try to either increase um, benefits or try to um, bring travelers in in the short term. There's many initiatives everyone is working on for longer term solutions, but um, it still remains a risk. And as all our surrounding hospitals are renegotiating contracts, we just keep seeing those salaries raise and raise. And I just um, 
want the, the board to understand that we are really working on this, but I don't see that we have a real solution that is really going to have an impact in the short term. They're longer term solutions. And it still is a huge risk for us as a small critical access hospital. And a lot of areas, <clears throat> you mentioned some of our budgeted clinical FTEs, a lot of that remains core staffing just to have the service open. So in my ED, we have two nurses 24 seven and I can't run it with less than that. So there's a lot of things that really are kind of fixed costs. So I just wanted to highlight that a little bit and um, let everyone know that there's not a big solution for that, that one area. Thank you, um, Ms. Murkowski. Nice to see you too. Anyone else? Okay. Um, <clears throat> there's one issue I wanted to flag that we can take up after lunch, but I want to flag it for the board members. Um, Grace Cottage had requested, I think it was a 2.5% rate increase, which was noted in slide 91 but the motion on slide 112 for the motion I made, but we have not voted on, um, had a typographical error of 3.4%. So I just want to flag that for the board that when we come back from lunch, I will likely move to amend the motion for grace to correct for that um, typo. And um, we can take, we take 45, 45 minute break and we'll come back. We'll come back then. So that's um, one twenty-five. We'll come back at one twenty-five. And Michelle, we can go off the record. Thank you. Okay, we're off the record at twelve thirty-nine p.m. Our hospital budget review um, from staff. Uh, we'll move on to North Country Hospital. I will share my slides. And Janelle, is this this is you again? Great. Okay, um, and I moved my computer a little bit closer, so hopefully you guys can hear me a little bit better. Um, I thought that might be the issue, but yeah, if you guys have a hard time, just let me know. Um, so for benchmark, they have requested a 1.6% NPR increase. I'm sorry, the court reporter, I apologize for interrupting. You do sound better, I just wanted, um, because it seems that you're you look when you look away and you look one 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 screen is probably catch you're capturing the audio on one side and you're speaking into the other side. So um I just wanted to mention that, but you sound pretty good. I'll only interrupt if I can't hear you. Thank you. I, I shifted a little bit. So I just have my notes over here. Um all right, so they have requested a one point six. Uh, percent NPR increase, and this is below budget and contributes minus 1% of the system overage above guidance. They have requested 4.7% for their commercial rate request. Uh, this contributes 1% to the system overage above guidance, and their budget has a positive operating margin of 2%, um, and this contributes to about 2% of the system operating margin. We can move to the next slide. Um, so here's what the hospital has to say for justifications. Um, it includes the fact that they have managed their expense, expenses well, budget to budget. They're expecting to reduce their expenses by 438,000 um, and they're, so which is about 0.4%. Uh, and they are actually projecting to come in under budget for expenses for 2024. I thought that was good to note too. Um, and this decrease accounts for cost inflation. And um, they also rely on public payers. North Country notes that their payer mix is 67% Medicaid and Medicare, including Medicare Advantage. And they argue that their reliance on public payers necessitates a higher commercial rate. We can move to the next slide. So for history of NPR growth by payer, uh, commercial is the top line here. And outside of 2022, it has always had the largest NPR of any payer. Uh, after 2022, 
It's risen steeply and it accounts for nearly 65% of total NPR for budget 2025. Just summing these and coming up with a percentage. Uh, moving on to Medicare, there was slow and steady growth up until 2024 uh, projected where there was a sudden drop off and it's budget, budgeted to increase slightly for 2025. And Medicaid has remained relatively flat with a peak in 21 to 22. And we can move to the next slide. So here's actual versus budgeted NPR. Uh, so taking a look, it looks like Medicare has consistently been under budgeted while Medicaid has been variable. Some years are over, some years are under. Uh, commercial has consistently been over budgeted with the exception of 21. This runs true for total NPR as well. Um, so same pattern, it's been over budgeted with the exception of 21. And we can move to the next slide. Uh, so the change in charge against commercial revenue, historically it's hovered around 4%, a little bit of a dip there it looks like in 22. Um, there's a spike in 2023, um, and then following that it has returned to that 4% range. Uh, budgeted commercial NPR dipped after 2018 and then slowly increased with maybe a small decrease for 2022. Um, in 2023, there was a larger jump and then an even bigger jump in 2024. Uh, 2025 looks to remain fairly flat compared to 2024. Um, maybe a little bit of an increase. Actual NPR has typically come in under budget with the exception of 21. And we can move to the next slide. So expenses. Um, Expenses have been flat from 23 to 24 about um, and are budgeted to increase slightly to project to 24. Um, so they're coming in under budget for projected. Uh, so budget to budget though, this is a decrease. Um, their top expenses include labor, other non-salary expense and other purchase service travelers and the miscellaneous bucket. Uh, reporting did not include the support the supplies or other purchase services in prior years. Uh, so that's, that's why it's a little bit more detailed for 24 and 25. Um, moving on to the table down below, it looks like they, for labor, they have over budgeted in years 2022 and 24. And in 2023, their labor expense came in about 1.5% high. Uh, for other purchase services, travelers, um, which is what I looked I decided to look at because it appears to have been reported consistently year over year. Um, it really peaked in 2022 and then has steadily decreased since then. Uh, the budget overages, there is, oh, okay. So the big budget overages, it's like 0% budgeted in 22 and 23. So I'm, I'm not sure if it um, just wasn't called out in the reporting. So that, that probably should have been whited out. I apologize. Um, if... Anyways, uh, they have been really working on bringing that expense down and are budgeting to nearly cut that expense in half for 25. Uh, they speak to filling several nursing positions in maternal child health and on the progressive care unit and have added three additional PCPs to start this fall, where two of them had previously been staffed with locums and um, North Country Hospital also calls nurse travelers and physician locums as one of the greatest risks in the budget. And we can move to the next slide. Here's some call outs in the narrative. Um, orthopedics decreased by one surgeon and no other staff was reduced. The remaining surgeon is planning on handling the volume, the, the volume remaining. Um, they no longer employ a urologist the budget for 2025 consists of a two day a week urologist nurse practitioner that will be done in collaboration with NBRH. Um, support staff has been decreased to match and a full-time nurse practitioner to pediatrics has been added due to patient need. 
It also mentioned eliminating two vice president positions and have opted to hold open the CFO position for a year. Um, and talking about this upper table here, there's 18 new hires from projected to budget 25. 67% of that is clinical, 33% is um, non-clinical. And overall, the clinical non-clinical split is 58-42. Um, and then looking at the changes by staffing department, the top changes are in operating room, family medicine, and then OBGYN. And we can move to the next slide. So North Country has had negative operating margins, um, 2022 and forward uh, with negative 10% margins. Uh, in 2024, they are nearly break even and call it a turnaround year in their narrative. North Country has historically overestimated their operating revenue. However, in 2024, they are projecting to have narrowed that gap down to less than 1%. They attribute a large portion of their negative financial performance over the last two years due to limitations of the new EMR implementation. And um, they've been really working hard to change that. Um, North Country Hospital also has historically underestimated expenses, um, but th for 2024, they are projecting to come in under budget. And we can move to the next slide. So not too surprisingly, uh, 2022 and 23 performed a little worse than anticipated. Um, 2024 is projected to be better overall and almost all positive with a small operating margin loss and 25 hopes to return to a 2% margin. And we can move to the next slide. So today's cash on hand, it looks good and it seems to be pretty consistently above 150 days. So looking good. Uh, days in patient accounts receivable, looks like it's been decreasing um, and it's moved from the poor performance to average performance, which is good. They, uh, they budgeted to be just over 30 for fiscal year 25, which is essentially within the high performance zone. So that's great. Um, and the next slide. One second. So taking a look at the left, we can see that North Country has funded depreciation and it is well above break even and it's a little above the US median. Um, but if we turn to the right uh, with the current ratio without that funded depreciation, we can see that um, it is below the break even line. Um, so you know, the, the current assets would not cover the current liabilities um, for, for a given year, I guess. Um, we can move to the next slide. So North Country has an average age of plant above the 75th percentile. So it's um, good for them to have funded depreciation. And we believe that this is just missing for 22. It might be a reporting difference. Um, North Country has been on a capital expenditure freeze for the last three years. Um, and that might be why they are budgeting for a reduced age of plant for fiscal year 25. And we can move to the next slide. So looking at long-term debt to capitalization, uh, we can see that 22 and 23 were both large. Oh, I, I'm sorry. I was call, I was looking at the debt service coverage ratio. Um, but if so, I'll, I'll start there. Uh, for the debt service coverage ratio, we can see that 22 and 23 were large negatives, uh, which aligns to having a negative margin. Um, it's improved and has become positive for fiscal year 24, um, but it it uh, hasn't reached 1.25 yet. It looks like it's starting to approach that for 25, but just a little bit under. And then looking at the long-term debt to capitalization, um, 
it looks like a pretty stable number. It increased a little bit in 23, but nothing, nothing dramatic and it's relatively pretty low. We can move to the next slide. So financial health solvency. Margins seem to be to slowly be returning to positive values. Days cash on hand is solid and days in patient accounts receivable has shown great improvement from fiscal year 22, going from poor performance to budgeting high performance in fiscal year 25. Current ratio is below one without unrestricted funded depreciation, um, but with it grows, um, oh, but with the depreciation, it grows to above the US median. Um, age of plant is above the 75th percentile, but may drop as the capital expenditure freeze ends. Long-term debt to capitalization is not a problem and debt service coverage ratio is improving, but still considered low. We can move to the next slide. So North Country appears to be high priced. Their lower relative price may indicate they're reimbursed better for Medicare patients, which is why many of their relative price deciles are in the normal or low range. Um, but that is that makes sense um, because they are a critical access hospital. And we can move to the next slide. So why did they or what did they assume for Medicare slash Medicaid price reimbursement increase? So from the narrative, they state that the 4% rate increase was applied to all hospital changes for all payers in inpatient and outpatient. No rate increase was applied to the medic medical group. And from the workbook, they have 0% for Medicaid and 2% for Medicare. Um, I guess in the narrative, it, it wasn't super clear. Um, the workbook had it a little bit more spelled out. Um, we can move to the next slide. So um, North Country requested an NPR increase of 1.6%. According to their workbook, 2.3% of that will come from increased volume. And I just wanted to call out that North Country split additional payers such as like self-pay, workman's comp, and other government out separately in their workbook for NPR. So a volume calculation might have um, been a bit different. I'm I'm not exactly sure, but um, that that might be why the volume is greater than the NPR. Then we can move to the next slide. So for commercial, um, this is just projected versus actual NPR. For commercial projected versus actual flip flop after 21 and projected consistently comes in higher than actuals for 22 and 23. And then for public payers, uh, actuals have come in higher than projected with the exception of 23. For both payers in 23, they are relatively close compared to the difference in 22. Then we can look at uh, next slide. So starting at the NPR, year over year, North Country has had their NPR submitted a um, increase for 2020 and decrease in 2022. Uh, the submitted NPR request was approved in 21, 23, and 24. And then historically, the, the actual NPR has fallen short of the approved budget with the exception of 21. Looking at their operating expenses um, year over year, they they haven't changed. They've been approved. Operating expense actuals have exceeded approved amounts with every for every year, with the exception of 2020. And last, the requested and approved margins have been pretty close to equal, with the exception of 2022. Actual margins have exceeded budget in 2020 and 2021, and have been less than budget for 22 and 23. And then we can move to the efficiency slide. So for clinical productivity, there's 13.95 FTEs 
0% of FTEs are under the 25th percentile, 49.1% of them are under the 50th percentile. In terms of cost, they are lower than all Vermont comparator groups. In 2020, for the average inpatient cost for Medicare discharge, but significantly lower than other peer groups for all years. Um, per revenue, the compound annual growth of NPR per adjusted discharge from 2018 to 22 is negative 0.31% compared to the critical access hospital state total of 4.35% and the um, critical access national median of 5.66%. And their admin to clinical salary ratio dropped from 24.3% in 21 to 15.4% in 22, which is below comparators. And that wraps it up. Uh, next slide. Thank you very much, Janelle. Um, I will make the motion um, and I move to approve North Country Hospital's budget with modifications as follows. With fiscal year 25 NPR approved at a growth rate of not more than 1.6% over its fiscal year 24 approved budget and a commensurate reduction in operating expenses. Um, with fiscal year 25 commercial change in charge and negotiated rate growth capped at 3.4% over the fiscal year 24 approved commercial rate cap reduced from 4.7% with no commercial rate increase for any payer exceeding that amount and subject to all other standard budget conditions as approved by this board. Second. Um, any board member questions or comments? Um, I'll, I'll make one comment just from an observation. I, I really appreciated North Country's presentation <clears throat> and some of the steps they're taking towards financial stability. You've seen a bit of a turnaround here that's fairly pronounced, and I really appreciate the steps they're taking to share some physicians and to really look hard at whether or not it is logical or su su sustainable to replace particular providers that they've lost and the expense management, the steps they took to on the CapEx freeze and holding open positions, I think has really helped stabilize the hospital um, from a financial standpoint. And I wanted to recognize that. Um, I realize this motion um, that's been uh, moved is a, a slight reduction in the uh, rate increase. And I look forward to hearing other board members' thoughts when it's an appropriate time on that. Any other board member comments? Uh, healthcare advocate? Nothing from us, thanks. Okay. And I'll open it to public comment on the North Country motion and presentation today. Hearing none, thank you, Ms. Figario, very much for your presentation. Um, I'll turn it back to uh, Director Barabee. Okay. Let's see the next one up. So Emma will take Matt Muscatney. I believe this is the last one that we have planned for today. So thanks, Emma. Thanks, Elena. Um, yes, thank you, board members, for staying with us. I know there's been a lot of slides today, so I really appreciate your attention. And um, luckily, we're on the last one, so I'll try to make this as painless as possible. Starting with their benchmarks, um, Mount Escutney is actually now the only hospital that has reached and achieved all the benchmarks that we set out in guidance. You may recall that initially their NPR request was above guidance, but due to some adjustments with their uh, unapproved con projects for their budget, they've actually come in below at 3.2%. Uh, their commercial rate request also below uh, benchmark at 2.2%, and then operating margins at 0.7%. So overall, again, Mount Escutney is the only hospital that is achieving all of these benchmarks. So we had a summary of hospital justifications here. However, now that they are not, or they're within benchmarks, this is no longer applicable, which is great. We can just move to the next slide. 
Looking at revenue trends, so Mount Escutney is a little bit different than many of the other hospitals that we've looked at today because we can see that their top line there is actually Medicare rather than commercial. Uh, so Medicare is their largest payer for NP NPR. They've increased from 28.4% or 28.4 million, excuse me, in 2018 to 41.2 million in 2025 budgeted. Below that is commercial. Um, similarly, we see increases, though probably not quite as fast, uh, increasing from 18.4 million in 2018 to 25.7 for 25. Um, and then we can see that they get very little or not very much um, Medicaid NPR, so 3.3 million up to 6.1 million. So overall, especially in comparison to commercial and Medicare, not a very big chunk. Looking at this slide overall, the main things that we can take away from this are one, if we look at the commercial line on the top, we can see that since 2020, there have been positive values, which means that they have under budgeted for commercial revenue. Whereas for Medicaid, it's a little bit more even. There's some years they're over, some years they're under, and that's expected. Uh, but then for Medicare, we can see that most of them are also under budgeted. So again, this would indicate that they're getting more money from Medicare than they're budgeting each year, which means that they could have reduced that commercial rate some. Looking at their change in charge, we see overall that Mount Escutney has a smaller range than some of the other hospitals. So we still see that same kind of increase from 22 to 24. You can see they increase from 2.2%, 4.7, and then 5.10% in 2024. However, this increase is still less than a lot of the other hospitals we saw, but we are still seeing that same trend of that larger increase from 22 to 24, and just likely less important or less uh, impactful at Mount Escutney. So looking at their expense trends on the left, we see that every year with the exception of this year, Mount Escutney's year-over-year -year growth in expenses has come in below the Vermont average. However, this year they're coming in at 6%, whereas the Vermont average is at 5.1%. Um, on the right side, again, we see labor is the largest chunk. So looking at 25 specifically, 66% for labor, 7% for medical and surgical supplies, 2% for other non-salary, and 20% for other services. Um, historically, 2022 to projected 24, Mount Escutney has underestimated operating expenses. In the breakdown of expenses, which is in that chart below, they have overestimated their labor expense. So we can see that it's actually growing further and further from actuals each year, from negative 2.2% to negative 8.1% in 24. Uh, but they're underestimating, so in the opposite case, for their other services expenses. And again, we see this increasing from 22 to 24, from 12.7% um, under budget or underestimating in 2022 to 2024 at 27.2%. Travelers have been a major expense of Mount Escutney. Um, they're currently operating at over 20 FTEs worth of travelers. They do mention both historic and future opportunities to work with Dartmouth Hitchcock for expense reduction, um, as well as their affiliation with Valley Regional Hospital, which began in July of this year. This will also help with administrative salary reductions and it allows both organizations to hire, to hire partial FTEs. And they also speak to increases in supplies reflecting infusion volume trends, which are both cost and revenue intensive, as well as inflationary increases in insurance. Looking at their labor, so starting with their clinical and non-clinical budgeted split, we see that it's 54% clinical, 46% non-clinical. Uh, this split is a little bit different from many of the other hospitals we've seen. Most other hospitals are closer to the 60 to 80 percent um, clinical, so we definitely have more non-clinical uh, impact here. But we do see that with their distribution of additional budgeted FTEs, that they are hiring or they are adding more clinical FTEs. So 73 percent of their additional budgeted FTEs are clinical, only 27 percent non-clinical. From the narrative, we see that the goal is to return to employed staff instead of contracted labor. Uh, the 25 budget includes continued use of contracted labor in some areas such as nursing, diagnostic imaging, and physical therapy. Um, however, there's less of these, this, this need is less in nursing due to successes in filling open positions with employed staff. And then on the right here, we can just see that their increases are largely, the two largest are in general services for clinical FTEs as well as medical and surgical clinical FTEs. Overall, looking at their operating margin, um, historically, Mount Escutney has been able to keep a positive operating margin um, and is projecting just 
to, to just break even for 2024, and there's a small increase for 2025. For 2022 and 2023, we can see that their margins were really close to their budget within about $200,000 each year. For 24, we can see that there's a pretty large drop, and this is due to them projecting an approximate $1 million in shortfall due to revenues coming in lower than budget, which we can also see on the right side in that chart. Looking at 24, their revenue comes in at minus 1.3%, whereas their operating expenses just over at 0.1%. They refer to the great resignation in their narrative as an obstacle to meet the needs of their community and that it has been a struggle with turnover in providers due to retirement, relocation, and reductions in hours. They also speak to diminishing returns relative to 340B. And in 2025, they speak to anticipating improved access with minimal additional costs and expect a slight increase in inpatient volumes and outpatient that will reflect an improvement in provider staffing. So now switching to their financial health a little bit, overall we see that there's their margins, one, weren't really impacted, which we saw on the last slide, by 22 or 23. Uh, there's only one red value here at all. We see a slight drop in the FY24 projected operating margin, which we discussed on the last slide, but it's still positive, and overall we don't have any major concerns for them here. Looking at their day's cash on hand, this is uh, well above the minimum recommended level. It seems to consistently be over 200 and, and continuing to grow, so definitely no concerns there. And uh, similarly, with their days and patient account receivable, we see them in the average to high range and, and really closer to the high range. So they're high performing um, in that regard. So again, we have no, no concerns with their day's cash on hand or days and patient account receivable. For Mount Esketney, unlike the previous hospital, they don't have unrestricted funded depreciation. So there's just the one graph on the right. We still want to see that ratio of one, um, which Mount Esketney has maintained. And it appears that they're trending positively towards that U.S. median. So this is, an, this is great, but the lack of funded depreciation may be somewhat of a concern, especially if their age of plant is high, as they may soon need to upgrade some of their assets. So we can look at the next slide for their age of plant. So what we see from Mount Scutney is that they are between the 25th and 75th percentiles, which is lower than many of the other Vermont hospitals. Uh, they've also dropped from FY23 actuals to FY24 projected. Uh, they talk about some facility and patient care related equipment improvements for FY25 in the narrative, as well as the most significant being a new plant chiller, a replacement plant chiller for FY25. For long-term debt to capitalization, again, not really a good number, but we see this decreasing um, and it is below the 50%. It's on the higher end of Vermont hospitals. Some are you know, low in the teens, but overall we don't have any concerns here with their long-term debt to capitalization. For their debt service coverage ratio, again, no concerns. We see them well above that minimum standard uh, ratio for lenders. And so overall, once again on this slide, no concerns for the Mount Scutney. So to summarize, margins overall are are positive or very close to it. We know there was a little bit of a dip in 24, but overall it seems solid. Their days cash on hand is high. Their days in patient account receivable is average to really high performing. Uh, their current ratio is above one, even without unrestricted funded depreciation. However, that is lacking. Um, but their age of plant is lower than most Vermont hospitals between the 25th and 75th percentile. Their long-term debt to capitalization continues to decrease year over year, and then their debt service coverage ratio was solid. We have no concerns there. So switching gears to brand, we can see that we would consider Mount Escutney to be a high-priced, higher-priced uh, hospital. We see that their deciles for standardized price are 9 or 10. Um, and again, we're seeing the same trend of relative price being lower due to them likely being reimbursed uh, well for Medicare patients due to them being a critical access hospital. So they wrote a lot for um, their assumptions for the Medicare Medicaid price reimbursement increase. Generally, they're explaining the way that them as a critical access hospital is reimbursed for Medicare. And then in the second part portion, when they're talking about Medicaid, that they wrote, they were actually, I think, the first hospital to submit their narrative. So they wrote it before recognizing that Medicaid was in fact not increasing, but there were rumblings that there weren't going to be increases. 
So from their workbook, we see 0.9% increase for Medicaid and 1.9% for Medicare. So that 0.9% for Medicaid could be due to the fact that Mabuskani is so close to New Hampshire. So perhaps that that's coming from uh, anticipated increases from out-of-state patients, because we know that in Vermont, there's no increase uh, budgeted for Medicaid. And then 1.9% for Medicare seems reasonable. Looking at their payer mix, again, Madiscutney is a little different than most of the hospitals we've discussed today. They've got a 56.5% uh, payer mix of medic traditional Medicare and Medicare Advantage, followed by 34.8% in commercial and just 8% for Medicaid. Looking at their changes to volume and utilization, it looks like they're anticipating increases largely in traditional Medicare and Medicaid with a slight increase in commercial and Medicare Advantage to be stable. And so overall, Mount Escutney requested an NPR increase of 3.2%, but according to their workbook, 1.8% of this will come from increased volume. Looking at their projected versus actual NPR, we see that overall they're actually very close. So for the commercial projected versus actual, we see their actuals came in a little over 21, a little over in 22, pretty much just right in 23. So overall that seems to be pretty consistent and we see the same trend with their public payers. So slightly over with actuals in 2022, they may have slightly under budgeted or under projected that year, but overall we don't see any major concerns. Looking at their budget history, uh, year over year, Mount Escutney has had their NPR and FPP submitted decreased in 2020. Uh, it was approved in 21 through 24, so we just saw a slight decrease in 2020. See, so it goes from 55 million to 53.8 million. Looking in the center at their operating expenses, they reduced, we had the had they had their operating expenses from submitted to approved reduced in 2020 and 2021. But uh, after that, they've had their operating expense approved in their other years. Their actuals have exceeded approved amounts every year with, again, the exception of 2020. And then finally, on the right with the, the requested and approved margins, they've been pretty close to equal, again, with the exception of 2020. Um, and actual margins have been equal to or exceeded budget every year. And then finally, to wrap it up with efficiency, for their clinical productivity, just over a third of all their FTEs are above the 25th percentile. The remainder are less, which means that um, just under two thirds of their providers or just of their FTEs are below the 25th percentile. So we definitely see room for uh, improvement with clinical productivity from out of Scutney. For cost, they're much higher than all the Vermont comparators and peer groups for the average inpatient cost per dis Medicare discharge. This meshes well with what we see in the RAND prices. For revenue, their compound annual growth rate of NPR per adjusted discharge from 2018 to 22 is 4.55%. So comparing that to the critical access state total, that's 4.35, it's just over. And then the critical access national median of 5.66, they come under, so somewhere in between those. And then finally, with their admit admin to clinical salary ratio, it was higher than comparators and it was climbing. So the most recent year of data we have in 2022 was at 22.4%. And with that, I will turn it back to you, Chair Foster. Wonderful, thank you. That was wonderful. Um, okay, I will make a motion to move to approve Mount Escutney's budget as submitted. With fiscal year 25 NPR approved at a growth rate of not more than 3.2% over its fiscal year 24 approved budget. With a with fiscal year 25 commercial negotiated rate growth capped at 2.2% over the fiscal year 24 approved commercial rate cap. With no commercial rate increase for any payer exceeding that amount and subject to all other standard budget conditions as approved by this board. Second. Any board member discussion or comments, questions for the staff? Uh, healthcare advocate? Nothing from us, thank you. And public comment. Mr. Garami? Hi, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, Andrew Garami from Manuscutney Hospital. I'm the Director of Finance. Um, I just wanted to make one point of clarification, if that's okay. I believe in the motion that was um, 
just recommended. The 3.2% uh, growth rate is that um, without the CON that was recently approved. So I believe we submitted um, uh, NPR growth rate of 4.3%. So thanks again for all the hard work and I just want to make that point for everybody. Thank you. Uh, right, great. Thank you for flagging that. <clears throat> um, uh, we'll, we can take that up with Ms. Barabee offline and see if that should um, be something that board considers. And if so, we'll um, we'll address it next week if we need to make an amendment. But thank you for flagging that. Any other public comment? Um, I'd like to go back to the Grace Cottage slides, if it's possible. Yes. Um, let me. Are you still seeing my screen? Yes. Although we are seeing your calendar, your as, calendar well as, as well, Elena. Thank there you, you go. <laughs> um, 12. There we go. Okay. Is it this no. one? Your, your calendar was giving us all nightmares. I know. <laughs> Gives me nightmares. Um, okay, so I like flagged earlier that, that there was a small uh, typo, and so I wanted to make a, a move to amend the motion that I'd made earlier. So I move to approve. And um, I'll, I'll step in, Chair Foster. So this this is the um, the language with the change. But if you don't mind, I'll actually pull up my slide and give you the amendment language separately. I, I uh, oh, sorry, didn't, didn't realize it's not there. So let me let me just pull that up. I'm happy to grab that quickly, and we can we can go off of mine. So you should see that that's the that's a motion to amend, and this is based off of a uh, the typographical error that I made in um, miswriting the uh, commercial change in charge and negotiated rate growth cap as proposed by the staff. Right. Right, so a 3.4 consistent with guidance for the change in charge and 2.5% for the negotiated rate. So that's, is this correct? So this is, um, this is a, I'll explain what we have in front of us. So um, Grace Cottage uh, presented to the board a, FY25 commercial change in charge and negotiated rate growth cap. Uh, their, their, basically their response to the second benchmark was a 2.5% increase in rate. Um, the slide presented earlier today should have shown a 2.5% uh, rate cap. The staff were recommending that the board approve the commercial rate as consistent with what Grace Cottage had submitted. My mistake was that I had placed in the uh, the benchmark, which was higher than what Grace Cottage had submitted and what the board or what, what staff had had approved. So what this language does is it modifies the motion so that the three point four percent is stricken. And in its place, the two point five percent, which is what Grace Cottage requested, is is added to replace it. I see it now. Thank you. That was helpful. I didn't have a chance to actually read the new motion language yet. So thank you for explaining that, Mark. Okay. Um, then I move to amend the motion to approve Grace Cottage's Grace Cottage Hospital's budget with modifications as follows. For the fiscal year 25 commercial change in charge negotiated rate growth cap, strike 3.4%. And for the fiscal year 25 commercial change in charge and negotiated rate growth cap, add 2.5% as consistent with Grace Cottage Hospital's fiscal year 25 budget submission.
I'll second. I'll second. And I will take a vote on this motion um, because the motion is to to modify the prior motion. Is that correct, Mark? That's right. So the vote on this amendment is a vote to amend the language that the motion that is being considered by the board, which means right. just to be very clear on this, if the board votes to pass this amendment, it will be voting to change the motion as presented earlier today to show 2.5% rather than 3.4%. That's to fix the error. The board will not be voting on whether or not to pass the motion itself. That motion, like the rest, will be tabled for today and carried into next week for further discussion and for a vote. Perfect. Um, all in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Wait, sorry, 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 I messed up the process. <laughs> sorry, there's too many processes going on. Um, I need to take public comment. Is there any public comment on the motion before the board? Okay. Hearing none, uh, if all in favor, please say aye. 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 Motion's approved, and when we take up the Grace Cottage Hospital um, motion that has been tabled, it will have the 2.5% change in charge negotiated rate number in it next week. Uh, I think that is all we have today. Is there any new or old business for the board? I introduce one more edit. That was just, I think we missed one word in our last slide. Um, I think this is supposed to also include, it's supposed to be consistent with the other. It should have both the charge cap and the commercial rate cap for Mount Escutney. Well, that is an oversight on my part, and I do apologize. Um, let's I think do. You, I think the chair could just take that as a friendly amendment. I don't think you have like typically if someone has made the amendment and it's been seconded but not voted on, the chair, the person who makes the amendment can accept it as friendly as long as the seconder agrees, and we don't all have to vote on it because typically you wouldn't vote for something that you were then going to vote against later. Which I don't know if any of us will on this, but. That might just be easier. I think it is, and we can do that. And that way, we have the right paperwork in front of us for next next week. So I, I'll take it as a friendly amendment. And then whoever seconds it can just agree. I, I can't remember who seconded if it was Dave or Tom, but it was Dave. I can agree. Yeah. Okay, Reset. and then and then mark for next week, we can just have that added in and then we're good. Great. I saw many of you up very late last night and early this morning working on this. So thank you for all the hard work to get this um, presented today. Any other new or old business for the board? Okay, and I will move that we adjourn. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Um, Michelle, thank you for your work today and to all the hospitals for participating today and we can go off the record and adjourn.